Hi everyone, welcome back to the Ministry of Guitar YouTube channel. This is Utkarsh coming to you from Singapore. Today we have for you a very popular PRS guitar, a very um, requested and also intriguing PRS guitar, which comes of course in both core and SE forms. This is the core model and this is the PRS core hollow body 2 with a flame maple top and back and the piezo. So, as always, we're going to run through the history of this particular guitar model. We'll run through how I got this guitar. We'll go through the specs. We'll go through some sounds. And finally, a summary of my thoughts. So, starting off with the origins of this guitar. Actually, the origins of this guitar are really with a guitar called the PRS Archtop. Uh, and the Archtop came out in about 1998. Uh, it was just like this particular... The origins of the PRS hollow body really go back to a guitar called the PRS Archtop, uh, which came out in 1998, if I'm not wrong. And the Archtop was very similar to this guitar, with the difference being that the thickness of that guitar was much thicker than this. Um, I actually have one of those, and I will be reviewing the Archtop at a different point in time. The other interesting thing about these early um, uh, original hollow bodies was they did not necessarily come with a double maple top. They came with either a spruce top, which is very interesting. Um, I want to get my hands on one of those sometime. Or they came with a mahogany, sorry, a maple top with a mahogany uh, back and side. So think of it almost like a piece of mahogany carved out. Uh, short, and of course, the piezo was an option on them, I think from around that time itself. Uh, later on, two changes happened. Uh, they developed this slightly thinner body style, which actually is pretty ergonomic. And um, they developed this idea of having two maple tops, uh, oh, sorry, a front and a back, with the splice of mahogany in the middle. This is what's called the hollow body two. And really, let me tell you a little bit more about what's the hollow body one, what's the hollow body two, what's the arch top. So hollow body one is mahogany with maple top, and hollow body two is literally two sides of maple with the mahogany splice. It's as simple as that. And they both come with piezo and non-piezo options. I would say in the wild, hollow body 2s are much more common and than hollow body 1s. And uh, some would argue that the hollow body 2 is a little bit more spectacular because having maple on both sides. Uh, for me, I do like the hollow body 1 as well. The slightly warmer sound, but we'll talk about that when we get into specs and sounds. Now, this particular guitar. So, I've had an interesting... I wouldn't call it love-hate, but uh, back and forth relationship with the PRS and in hollow body guitars in general. Um, I've had a couple of uh, Gibson hollow body guitars, of course. The semi-hollow semi, semi -hollow construction of an ES-355 or a 335 is very different from this, which we'll talk about. But somehow I never could find one that was right for me. I bought and sold a few. And I've tried out many PRS uh, hollow bodies in the shop. And what I really found is that not all of them were perfectly balanced. Some of them, because this guitar is extremely light, tended to be a little bit, uh, you know, neck heavy. In fact, there was a very beautiful one I played once in Japan with a beautiful rosewood neck and charcoal cherry, which was my favorite color in a satin finish or something. And it was just slightly neck heavy for me, at least. I am not someone who can tolerate any neck heaviness at all. I just don't like it. So some people are fine with it. But for me, I could never find one that was right. Of all the places, right here in Singapore, and the ironic thing for me is despite me owning so many PRS guitars, I've rarely bought any of them new here in Singapore. Um, in the local retailer, I actually walked into the shop one day, not looking for a PRS, not looking for anything. And I spotted this in there. Uh, they have a, whatever, a room for the, all their premium guitars. And I was intrigued because the color was very interesting. And we'll talk about what color this is when I get into the specs. And I went and tried it out and it was just perfectly weighted. So this is slightly heavier than the normal hollow bodies, I would say. Uh, I think usual hollow bodies are like five pounds or something. Uh, this may be closer to six, but it's still a very light guitar. But it was perfectly balanced and it was very resonant. So I just thought about it. I was not in the market for a guitar. It's not a cheap guitar. But I was like, I've been looking for one of these for a long, long time. So when am I going to find one which is perfectly weighted in a color that I like? So... Yes, perfect in self-enabling happened on that particular day. All right, let's get into the specs. So an important thing to note about this guitar is the construction. We're going to start there because that's going to be the first question that you'll have. Compared to a ES335 where you have a laminate maple tops, you know, 
with a semi-hollow construction. This is a fully hollow guitar, with the exception of there being a little bit of a block underneath where the bridge is, and I think also where the pickups are, but little, I mean, actually mostly under the bridge. Please check out a detailed video by someone more informed than me, who will take you through the diagrams and some, everything, but for what you want to know, what you want to really know is this little bit of a block here. Uh, other than that, the guitar is totally hollow, but this is a solid piece of maple. Of course, there's two-piece maple, book match maple on the top, and book match maple on the on this on the back, with a splice of mahogany in the middle, mahogany on the back. Uh, sorry, on the on the neck. So that's how this guitar is constructed. The difference between this and a hollow body one would be the hollow body one would have this entire back and sides made out of mahogany. One piece of mahogany, so it's literally carved into the mahogany. So I find the construction method for the hollow body one a little bit more fascinating since they take a huge piece of mahogany and carve the shape out. But nonetheless, the hollow body two is pretty fascinating as well. Of course, you have the two F holes, so this is a hollow body construction. Um, on the issue of feedback, there's a short answer, none. And you will see, I'm not really going to be able to demonstrate it because, you know, I'm usually playing through a helix when I do these things, so I can't really show you whether there's feedback or not, but... Let me assure you, having played this guitar with loud amplifiers and in settings other than my bedroom, it does not have feedback. And I think that is a consistent feedback. Wow, no pun intended on the internet as well. Okay, what else? So we talked the words mahogany body uh, and maple top and back, mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard, uh, 25 inch scale length. Two humbuckers, these are PRS 5815, low turn. So these are originally from the 594 and they can found their way here. Amazing PF style pickups. This is of course a hardtail with piezo uh, on the saddles. Then you have uh, master volume, master tone, no splitting on this, which is an interesting choice. So you can split it if you want, but honestly the piezo makes it so versatile. You don't really need a split. Three way switch toggle, usual. Plus a little three-way for the piezo, which goes between uh, magnetic only, piezo magnetic mix, and piezo only. And this is the piezo volume, or a piezo blend when you do magnetic and piezo together. This, of course, has two output jacks, one for the mix, one for the piezo only. What else? Um, yeah, frets-wise, standard PRS frets, so these are kind of medium jumbo. Tuners-wise, Standard PR is phase three, phase three modified locking tuners. I was looking to just confirm these are the modified ones. Uh, modified phase three tuners have a little hole in them, so you can tell that it's the modified one. But in general, like all PR is phase three tuners, beautiful, easy to use, and extremely aesthetic with the uh, open gear locking tuners, and very easy to use with the little, what do I call it? The little way to just quickly screw off the and attach your string, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's super easy. Best tuners in the business bar none. Speaking of best in the business bar none, best build quality in the business bar none. Um, I'm biased of course, but actually I'm not biased. I'm really a product of seeing a good product and liking it. And PRS core guitars have the best build quality in the business. There is just no comparison. There just isn't. Um, and so a lot of people give PRS a lot of flack for looking beautiful and flashy. And yes, they do do that. but. At the core of it, it is an extremely high quality, super musical, super playable guitar. So that's why people like it. That's why I like it. And that's why I went from Gibson super fandom to this. I mean, to PRS mania a little bit, as you can tell from the back. Okay, that's the specs. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Yes, I did. Neck shape. This is called a pattern neck shape. Similar to the old white fat. What does it mean for you? Think of it as a 1959 Les Paul neck shape. Not too fat, not slim at all. Uh, just kind of chunky in a nice way, in a very playable way. Perfect for this, this particular genre of guitar. Okay, let's get into the sounds.
begin with, let me show you the clean sounds for all three positions plus the piezo. And you can appreciate a little bit about the, the characteristics of this guitar. So very warm, very nice. The piezo on this guitar compared to say a custom 24 piezo sounds better. The electronics are exactly the same. It's really the hollow body construction. And I've kind of A-B'd this. Maybe I'll do a video sometime. But you know, if you were, so if you were playing a more acoustic-y set, this guitar will serve you better because it'll sound more like an acoustic through a piezo than a, than a custom 24 piezo would. So there's that. Uh, let's hear some distorted sounds uh, again just on the three positions neck bridge and uh, neck neck bridge and middle Again, very usable, very much in the 335 territory if you so want it. The 5815 LTs are PAFs, so you can do Steely Dan on this or whatever else that, or a little bit of cream, you know, perfectly, perfectly uh, in, this, in the territory of what this guitar can do. At the same time, the surprising thing of the bridge pickup is that it can still do high gain and classic metal, what is called classic metal now, 80s metal, uh, Metallica. Priest, Iron Maiden, you can do all of that. This guitar does not shy away from high gain at all. It's an argument to say, why would you do high gain on a guitar like this? But hey, if you have investing in one expensive guitar, and we'll talk a little bit about what I think this guitar, who this guitar is for in a second. Maybe you want to do play Metallica and you can play it on this. So let me play something high gain-ish too for you to get a sense. Okay. <laughs> Now we move on to the acoustic sounds. So I'm going to show you a range of acoustic sounds, strumming, finger picking, a um, little bit of uh, effects at the back. And you can get a good sense of what acoustic, how this guitar sounds like acoustic. This is just the piezo into a clean amp. I am not an expert at dialing in an acoustic tone. My experience typically has been in a live setting. Uh, you can actually get away with the clean amp as long as, 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 as long as you make sure it doesn't distort. And it will not sound perfectly like an acoustic, it will sound like a piezo. Uh, but if you really go mad and you figure out how to compress it and do all the different things that you can do with technology nowadays, you can really make it sound authentic. But this is my level of prof proficiency right now, so check it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
finally, my favorite part about having these piezo, these PRS piezo guitars is the blend. When you blend the, say, the neck humbucker with a little bit of piezo, you get all the warmth of a neck humbucker with a little bit of clarity and bite, which is perfect, especially if you want to make the guitar heard either through effects, ambience, or just overall improve cut through of the guitar. Uh, and you can't do this with only a piezo, you can't do this only with a magnetic, you have to blend them together. And from my experience, comparing this to, say, the Music Man blends, uh, you know, the, I have a Majesty 7. For me, the PRS Piezo, the core PRS Piezo, because the, the SEs have a slightly different version of the Piezo. The core PRS Piezo is bar none. It is the best system in the market. All the strings are perfectly balanced. It's, it's great. It needs no adjustment. And here are some tones that give you a sense of what you can do with that blend. Alright, now that we are done with the sounds, let me tell you my overall thoughts and the summary about this guitar. So this guitar, I would say, is for the mixed musician. What is a mixed musician? The kind of person who's doing a combination of electric and acoustic work. There are a few guitars in the world that lay claim to providing that. You can think of the Taylor T5Z. Maybe, of course, the John Petrucci models, either the Majesty or the JP6, JP7. This one, and of course, PRS's own stable mate, the Custom 24 Piazzo. This one is for the person who's a little bit more, and sorry, I keep repeating, I keep interrupting myself. And of course, something like the Acoustasonics from, from Fender. This one really is for the person who wants a no comp non compromise electric guitar yet does have a fair amount of acoustic work to do. You know, nowadays, if you think about when you play in bars, especially at least here in Singapore, or even in weddings or whatever, the majority of the work really isn't gainy, uh, full band stuff. It's really acoustic three-piece playing stuff like, you know, Ed Sheeran and all that. I'm not the biggest fan of that music, but that is really what the audience wants. So that's kind of what a lot of people would be doing. You could get an acoustic guitar, but then you could never really play electric leads properly on it. You could get uh, something like uh, Acoustasonic, but again, it's still an acoustic guitar at the core. It is a compromised acoustic guitar and a compromised electric guitar. What I like about the PRS guitars, at both the Custom 24 as well as this one, the Piezos, is that there's no compromise as far as electric guitar side is concerned. It is a proper electric guitar plus an acoustic on top. So as an electric guitar, it is as good as any other electric guitar. There's no difference. It's, it, is a, it is exactly that. And on the acoustic side, my preference would be if you have a lot more acoustic work, I would recommend this. If you have a lot more electric work with just a little bit of occasional acoustic work, I would recommend the Custom 24 Piezo. So this is more like you do have a bit of acoustic work, but you do like to occasionally, uh, you do also play electric, you do also play some distorted sweet leads, but you do have a lot of acoustic work. So for me personally, if I had to go for say an acoustic gig in a three piece band, I would take this. I wouldn't take the custom 24 PS. So I would not take a simple acoustic guitar because I couldn't then play the leads that I would want to on top. I would take this. So this is really for you. If you do like playing electric guitar, you do play electric, but you do also need to play a lot of acoustic a lot of the time. What else? Um, is it worth it over the SE? That really is a question of affordability. If you can afford it, the answer is yes. If you cannot and you have to sell a lung or a kidney or something, no, you can get away with the SE. The SE is slightly different. It is 
uh, slightly bigger actually, uh, maybe a little less refined in its sounds, little le less easy to operate because it doesn't exactly have the this little mini switch to toggle between the piezos. You have to do a little bit of wizardry with how you operate the switches. Uh, obviously, this is the this is the top of the line, right? So this is better. But is it two times or three times better? Not really. But frankly, it depends on your purpose. If you want to have many, many guitars for fun and you want to have a hollow body in there as well, the SE would work well. Uh, if you are investing in that one guitar that you're going to use for gigs, and though some people may have preconceptions about using such an expensive guitar on gigs, honestly, uh, <laughs> there is nothing more reliable than a Core PRS. So... As long as security is taken care of, this would be a, this is just amazing. Uh, and don't be too worried about getting a little bit ding here and there. It's fine. It's character. If it's your guitar that you're going to use for your, for your whole life, you can totally get this. Okay, so as you can tell, I like this guitar. I use it. I haven't really had any acoustic gigs yet. So I actually bought this with the intent that, okay, I'm going to use this in the acoustic gigs, but I haven't had any yet. But... Um, yeah, that's what this one really is for. I have had the chance to take it out a few times outside of the house to other places. Um, really, I took it to like uh, friends' parties and stuff, and I thought about which guitar should I take when you go to. Uh, and especially since we were going to plug up, uh, plug in, and you know, make do a couple of things with a with a piano and everything, it had to be this guitar. Because on one hand, if you want to just be strumming, it's slightly audible on a sofa versus a typical electric guitar because it has the unplug you know it has the hollow body sound at the same time when you plug it in it's a proper electric so you can do all the shenanigans which people like you know they want sometimes guitarists to do at parties and stuff so i like this guitar uh, it has a it has a very specific place uh, in my in for my needs in my collection and it'll stay so i hope this was helpful till next time